All right, baby. I cut your daughter-in-law's brakes. I made the phone call to my friend. He's gonna use his tow truck. He's gonna tow the car to your daughter-in-law's house in the middle of the night. Second she, uh, second she drives off, there's no stopping. Okay, great. I thank you for doing that. It does show your loyalty. You listen to what I said though, right? You made sure that she made accommodations for those kids, right? Those kids ain't gonna be in the car. Yes. The kids won't be in the car. She's gonna be dropping them off at her mother's. She still didn't want to give the baby to you? Even after finding out that it's not your grandkid? It's not her husband's son? She still didn't want to give him to you? No. She doesn't feel comfortable. But that's okay. It's not my grandson anymore, I guess, right? You sure you want to do this? You sure you want me to drop this car off? You don't want to talk about this with her? You don't want to try to smooth nothing over? Yes. You know, I'm not opening my mouth to my son's baby's mother, and I'm not telling my son. I'm gonna hope for the best, but I know when it comes to Miranda, if she's not taken out, she's going to put me behind bars. Or at least she's gonna try to. All right, I had to ask. I also wanna ask you, did you always hate your daughter-in-law? Or did you start to hate her once the grandkid was born? Mm, I hated her from day one, from day one, because I knew she was the type of person to come into my family and take every tradition that I had and turn it on its head or take it away completely from talking to my son every other day to seeing him on the holidays. She took it all away. Anything you would expect an in-law to get, just as a right, a courtesy, she forbade it. And then I was naive to think that when my grandson was born, everything would change and maybe she would soften a little bit. Maybe I would get to have grandparent pictures and things. No, she took it all away. And, and I became this woman in the background who gets a phone call once a month, who has to observe her family through Facebook. You know, I'm sure you see a lot of hate comments about everything you've done and all that. But I'm sure the quiet ones, the ones that don't say nothing, they understand you. So they've probably been there too. You got someone that comes into your family, tries to tear it apart after you raised your son, your daughter. For 30 years they come in and they change everything. If you can't understand why you would want to off someone because of that, then I don't know, because I understand it. I understand you, Mill. Well, it's nice to finally be understood by someone. It really is. You know, last Christmas, I got my, my grandson, this Thomas the Tank Engine, huge track, the car goes by itself, all that. You know, I bought, I spent a lot of money on that. I called my daughter up. I said, look, I don't need to see you on Christmas. I don't need to come over on Christmas Eve. We don't gotta have no dinner, nothing like that. Just let me hand my toy to my grandson. That's all I ask. Simple, right? And guess what she said? I'm assuming she gave you some BS excuse. Nah, not an excuse, not a sorry, nothing. She just said no. She said no, I'm busy hangs up. Now I got this toy sitting in my bedroom. Every night I go to bed I look at that toy and I know that my grandson getting bigger every day doesn't know me. I don't know him anymore. I got this this freaking toy just sitting there mocking me. Makes me want to get on a train and go away. Oh, that's terrible. Now you know where I'm coming from. It's all that husband of hers. All that, all that brainwashing. So you know, I'm cutting your daughter-in-law's brakes, but I'm thinking of him. That's, that's why it's easy for me. I'm thinking of him.